let love be the meditation this is the last in the series of talks on love and marriage a spiritual journey is like a spiral staircase you will have seen a spiral staircase you are moving in circles and you are your height altitude is changing again and again you are coming back to the same spot which you have visualized from the ground level first level second third so on and so forth this has been beautifully explained in one of mira's bhajans she says to krishna i have looked at you from different levels different altitudes as my consciousness changed i saw you from the ground level where you get a very hazy view of all the things that are taking place your perception is not clear when you reach the second level you can get a little better perception and you would notice whenever any particular event is reported or telecast the television cameras are put at a high altitude from there using the camera techniques you can bring the even closer and farther so a spiritual journey is like that again and again we will come back to the same topic when the altitude of your, of your consciousness has changed you will get a different way of looking at the things when tavajjo flows from a master or sheep to the seekers how does it work it is a silent communion of energy first aspect of it is it prepares you to receive the energy second it softens your heart and third it sends commands but here through these meditations we cannot use the flow of energy as it is called tavajjo here words are used to communicate that tavajjo or energy field so you will notice some of the sentences are like a statement on a particular aspect others are so soft and mellow meaningless yet still they carry a tremendous energy force behind it and this is to soften your heart which has become because of circumstances and situations hard and the last where the commands is to be given that is to be those sentences are of the nature of command they come from a different center the from the third eye center the sentences that flow from the heart they have the capability to soften to make you mellow and when these three things happen simultaneously these words become medicinal and have the quality to transform love can become marriage but then it is a totally different kind of marriage allow the dimension of meditation to breathe and flower in and through marriage every aspect of your marriage be soaked in meditation it is not a social formality it is not an institution and it is not a bondage when love becomes marriage it means two individuals decide to live together but in absolute freedom non possessiveness of each other love is non possessive it gives tremendous freedom when love grows into marriage 
marriage is not an ordinary thing. It is absolutely extraordinary. It has nothing to do with the registry or registrar. The social sanction may be needed, but those are just on the periphery. They are not the central core of it. In the center is the heart, and with that, freedom rules. And sometimes, out of marriage, also love can grow, but it rarely happens. Out of marriage, love rarely happens. At the most, familiarity is there. At the most, a certain kind of sympathy can happen but certainly not love. Love is passionate and sympathy is done. Love is alive, but sympathy is just lukewarm. But why does Master tell people to get married? When he sees that they are after security and social sanction, when fear is there, when he sees that they cannot move into love if marriage is not there, then I tell them to go into it. But he goes on helping them to go beyond it. He will go on helping them to transcend beyond the quagmire of marriage. Marriage should be transcended only when real marriage happens. Marriage should be forgotten completely. In fact, the other person you have been in love, in fact, the other person you have been in love with should always remain a stranger and never should be taken for granted. But in marriage, one of the major problems is we take each other for granted. When two persons live as strangers and there is a distance, there is a beauty of it, a very simple and innocent beauty to it. And everyone is a stranger. You cannot know a person. Every day, every moment you are trying to know read a few pages. Knowledge is very superficial when, while a person is profound. A person is an infinite mystery. That is why we say everyone carries God within the greatest mystery. There is mystery hidden deep within everyone. How can you know a God? How can you know God at all? At the most you can touch the periphery. And the more you know about the person, the more humble you will become. The more you will feel that the mystery is untouched. In fact, the mystery becomes deeper and deeper. The more you know, the less you feel that you know. If you are really in love, you will never reduce the other person to a known reality. If you really are in love, you will never reduce the other person to a known entity. Remember, only things can be known, but not a person. Only things can become part of knowledge. A person is a mystery and will always remain the greatest mystery of the unknown. That's why sometimes we have found the husbands and wife telling one another, you are difficult to understand. But we say those statements out of disgust. But the reality is, a person is a mystery and always remains the greatest mystery of the unknown. 
transcend marriage to attain to the state of meditativeness. It is not a question of legality, formality, family, and all that nonsense that comes with it. You can live in a society but transcend and do not be finished with that. And do not try to possess a person. Do not start feeling that the other is husband or wife. Otherwise, you have reduced the beauty of the person into an ugly thing, husband and wife. The word husband out of this, husband is noun, out of this an adjective comes husbandry. We call it animal husbandry and other kind of husbandries. So this seems that we have reduced the marriage husbands to the act of husbandry. Never say that this woman is your wife or husband. Then a stranger is no then a stranger is no longer there. You have reduced it to a very profane level, to a very ordinary level of things. Wives and husbands belong to the world. Lovers belong to the other shore, the shore of divinity. Remember the sacredness and holiness of the other. Never impinged on it or trespass it. A lover is always hesitant. He always gives you a space to be yourself. He is grateful, but he never feels that you are his possession. He is thankful that sometimes in rare moments you allow him your innermost shrine to enter and to be with you. He is always thankful. Remember, he is grateful, but he never feels that you are his possession. He is thankful that sometimes, in rare moments, you allow him your innermost shine to enter and be with you. He is thankful. But husbands and wives are always complaining, but never thankful yet always fighting. And if you watch their fight, it is ugly. The whole beauty of love disappears. Only a very ordinary reality exists. The wife, the husband, the children and day-to-day -day routine. The unknown is lone, unknown no longer touches it. The unknown no longer touches each other. That is why you will see dust gathers around, a wife looks dull, a husband looks dull, life has lost its meaning, vibrancy and old significance. It is no longer poetry, instead it has become gross. Love is poetry, marriage is ordinary prose, Good for ordinary communication. If you are purchasing vegetables, it is good. But if you are looking at the vast open sky to talk to God, not enough poetry is needed. Ordinary life is prosaic. A religious life is poetry. A different rhythm, a different meter, and something of the unknown and mysterious lurks from every core of it. <coughs> every aspect of it reflects something unique and different. When a master says he is not in favor of marriage, never misunderstand him. Never misunderstand him because he is not saying to leave people unmarried. Do whatsoever the society wants to be done, but never take it 
as the home that is just the periphery instead go beyond it and when master tells you to get married do not hesitate he does so because he feels that this is what is needed for your inward journey in fact if he feels that you need to go in hell you should he should in fact if the master feels that you need to go in hell he will allow you and push you to go through the fire of hell because that is what you need and that is how you will grow and when you come out of this you will be shining in inner splendor because when a master interacts or communes with you in fact on the surface it is appearing he is communing with you but he communes with your innerness with your energy field and then whatever is necessary for your growth and for the transcendence he allows that to happen in that way and then it gives you a totally a different dimension you have reached to a higher level of your consciousness or higher altitude and you are looking into the circumstances and situations and events that are taking place at different planes the physical relation is at the lowest plane what what happens after that that is on a different plane different altitude the introspection moment to moment is also an important aspect